Perhaps today's feast, the Ascension, has been overshadowed by the other two great feasts, either side of it, Easter and Pentecost. And yet for Pithet, today's feast, which marks an end and the beginning. It's the end of Jesus' visible, tangible life on earth, the resurrection appearances. They came to an end as he ascended into heaven. Now we can no longer walk with him, talk with him, eat with him, think he's a gardener, and so on. So it's the end of one phase of God saving us, and it's the beginning of another, the age of the Spirit, because, as Jesus tells us, unless he went, the Spirit could not come with his gifts and his fruits, the age of the Spirit in which we now live. So it's the pivot between the ending in one sense of Easter and the beginning of Pentecost. And this matters very much for how we understand Jesus and how we understand ourselves. One view might be that Jesus as God, as the Son of God, existed from all time, in fact, in eternity. But at the Incarnation, Christmas, he came as a human being among us for, say, 33 years. And at the end of those 33 years, after the resurrection, he went back to heaven, to being God, having, as it were, accomplished his mission in human form. That's exactly the opposite of what we believe. This morning, Jesus Christ is a human being and will always be a human being, as well as the Son of God. Being human wasn't just a phase, a stage in his mission among us. This means that today's feast, the Ascension, it means, if you like, that there's a human space in God for us, and that's the humanity of Jesus Christ. So we will be at home when redeemed completely, when in heaven, because heaven has now Jesus Christ's humanity, body, blood, and divinity. There is, if you like, a human space in God for us, a home for us human beings. And that's the importance of today's feast for us. God did not create us as souls only. God does not save us as souls only. We are embodied souls, and our humanity takes bodily and spiritual form. So if God were to save us as souls only, he would not be saving us because we are not souls only. And that's the center of our hope. When we look to heaven, when we look forward to heaven, it's as complete human beings, body and soul, then united in heaven with God in Jesus Christ, body, soul, and divinity. So it's an enormously important feast today's, and not only important, but a source of joy. We've just said with the psalmist, God goes up 
with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. It's not always easy to generate joy, not only because it's early in the morning, but unless we understand, our hearts won't follow. One of the ways Christians came in the early Middle Ages to show the ascension of Jesus into heaven was by painting or sculpting a cloud with two feet, two legs dangling out of a cloud. And you may even see that, for example, if you go on pilgrimage to Walsingham in one of the shrines. Now that probably started in England, Anglo-Saxon England, showed today's feast as a cloud with two legs and feet dangling out of it. And from Anglo-Saxon England, it spread to other parts of Europe. Now that make us, may make us smile, the thought of that, the sight of that, but a smile is the beginning of joy. So yes, smile at these two dangling feet and legs, but then go deeper and rejoice that there's a human space in God for us, and it's Jesus Christ. Thank you.